when he entered the city, all the people came to meet him, and they were crying out to him as with one voice. And the elders of the city stood forth and said, Go not yet away from us. In noontide have you been in our twilight, and your youth has given us dreams to dream. No stranger are you among us, nor a guest, but our son and our dearly beloved. Suffer not yet our eyes to hunger for your face. The soul is not a stranger to the mind. The mind doesn't know how much it loves the soul. The measure of it, the intensity of it becomes visible only at that moment when the mind sees that there is a possibility that it can lose its home, its place of dwelling the soul that it has lived with, the soul that was its house, can be taken away from it. There are two things here. One is just the enlightened individual who has realized the truth of what life is, who has become the answer to all your questions. Once you recognize who he is, once you recognize the source that is illuminating his being, something within you reminds you of your own nature which is the very definition of love. Purest form of love is not the recognition of love in others. It is not seeing love in expressions of life. It is not seeing love as an independent, separate quality of life. Love is to recognize the inseparable nature of life. Love is to see yourself in everything around you. He's about to leave. They have lived with him. They have heard him speak. They have understood the longing of his heart. They know that he wants to go. They know that they cannot stop him. The immortal desire for awakening can never be curtailed, can never be contained by the mortal desire of the mind. The desire of the mind is just to exist. It is not to merge. It is not to become one with everything else. That is why no matter how hard your mind tries to contain your heart, it can use all the tricks. Eventually, the strength of the heart wins. Because heart knows love. It knows the boundless nature of being. It knows that what it is moving towards is not an object, is not a destination, is its own true nature. That is why we use phrases like, I did this because I wanted to. It just resonated with me. Many a times, we won't even be able to put it in words. Some of the most important decisions of our lives, some of the most important moments of our lives, when we reflect back, those are the moments when we have used our heart to conquer the mind. Those are the moments when we have been strong enough. Something inside us, a longing for freedom, a longing for connection, 
a longing for your own inner self gives you the strength to fight your mind. Your mind is continuing to dissuade you. Your mind is continuing to scare you. Don't do this. Don't go here. This is not your path. This is not your way of life. But once you recognize the language of the heart, once you have watched your heart enough, you know that your heart can never mislead you. Once the connection with your heart is established, then you can hear the voice of your mind. You can hear how it speaks. You can know that it does not know anything. All it knows is how to argue persuasively. And it does not matter what it is arguing for or against. It uses language which, by definition, is a one-sided argument. Language is a one-sided argument. You can use language to cut both ways. The very same thought, the very same idea can be perfectly contradicted using words. And there is not a single statement in the world of language that cannot be contradicted. It could be the words of ordinary human beings or it could be the words of an even ordinary human being like the Buddha. If you really want to criticize, if you want to contradict, it is possible and it is very easy. That is what the mind does. It is constantly arguing against yourself. But somewhere when your heart begins to break the boundaries, it starts moving towards its true nature. It starts breaking free, the mind begins to realize. Now there is pain. It knows that Finally, the heart has succeeded. There is no way I can use reasoning, judgment or arguments to convince this individual not to move towards their highest possibility. I cannot threaten using the body. I cannot entice by showing the riches of the world. I have nothing because this individual has figured out that there is something real which is not me. Mind only appears to be real and it is real, it is powerful, it is the dominant force in your life up until that point when you begin to realize that the very fabric of life this very moment, this very space you're occupying is the realm of the heart. You don't need to manufacture courage. You don't need to learn or acquire some new skills to fight the mind. You just have to be here. You just have to go deeper into this moment. When the mind sees that you are moving into the depths of your being, how long can it follow? It will follow for a while. After it travels with you for a while, it realizes that it has no place where you are going. You are moving towards silence. And what is the use of the mind in the realm of silence? You are moving towards peace, stillness. You're moving towards light. You're moving towards consciousness. What is the use of mind? Mind is a small keyhole through which you have been looking at the world. 
Now you figured out a way to break the walls. You are shattering one wall after another. Every time you go deeper into your being, searching for your true self, you're breaking some walls. And your mind is sitting there still insisting that you look at the world through its keyhole. And you're like, what is the necessity? I can see better. I was trapped here. Now I can move freely. I don't have to rely on your instructions. But the mind will continue to say things. The world is this. The world is that. This is your purpose. This is your responsibility. But by the time you have begun to experience life directly, you know these are just words. These are just ideas.